G'day, it's Jay and welcome back to Dairy Air Farms, where we're going to take a look at how the sawmills work in Silver Run Forest, because they are an integral part of the production chains, as you can see from this diagram, but they both work a little bit differently. This is very important because the two sawmills work differently and they're a little bit different than the sawmills in the base game. And as you saw in the production chain chart, like I said, they form outside of the iron ore mine, they form the basis for all the new productions. And they do work differently. So that's why I thought it was worth covering the difference between the southern sawmill, which is the one you see in front of me here, and the northern sawmill, which is the old style sawmill. If you've watched the map tour video, you'll know what I mean by the difference in the two. All right, so this is the first, this is the southern sawmill. This one is not ownable. It is a production chain in a sense. You can bring wood to this sawmill and you can sell it. But it does not actually produce anything. And I'll show you what I mean. And I do have my little, oh, I'm going to cheat in a little bit of money. Let me do that. And then uh, we're going to spawn in some logs. All right, give me one second. And away we go. So we have our first delivery of logs to the Southern Sawmill. You can deliver them by road. You can deliver them by a train. It's really up to you how you get them here. And you sell them the way you would normally sell wood at any other sawmill. Press the R key. And we got, for that little load of wood, we got 13000 almost $14,000. But we'll have a run around and you'll notice that absolutely nothing has been produced. There's no wood chips. I don't see anywhere where there's any type of production going on. Ugh, I hate the doors. It's like the doors in this game are made for midgets. Nothing in the warehouse here. So, like I said, it, this warehouse is purely, or this production is purely, purely a sales point. If you want anything lumber-wise, you sell the wood. And remember, we made 14000 roughly. And you can get, you actually have to buy the products here. So, planks, prefab walls, wood beams, planks long planks um, and then you can determine how many pallets you want so we're just gonna buy well we have money we'll buy two pallets at 14,000 so you're basically paying retail price and you kind of have to um, when you start out and I'll go into that more when we look at the other sawmill So we've purchased that wood, and as you can see, it appears inside our hall. And there's conveniently a forklift placed for us. You basically then load it up with the forklift, open the door, assume you have a truck, uh, truck with the trailer, or even a tractor with a trailer or something capable of carrying pallets parked outside and away you go. Unfortunately, there is, if you're into auto loading vehicles, there is nowhere on the outside that they spawn. They spawn inside the hall. So you have to get them from inside the hall to outside the hall to be able to load them. Uh, once they're outside, sure, go ahead and you use your auto-loading truck, trailer, whatever. 
So that's how this sawmill works. In terms of functionality, like I said, it is essentially purely decorative. It just uh, it allows you to sell and it allows you to buy. Like I said, it can't be owned by anyone, but it will give you, if you need it, any of the wood that it is required for either the roller coaster or the production chains. And we're going to look later on at the other production chains and we can also look at what's required for the boats and for the roller coaster so i'm assuming this was put in here this way for multiplayer maps because there's well there's only one sawmill on this map that's purchasable so this is the way i guess giants put it in so that in multiplayer people can still bring their products sell the wood and get the wood products they need without having to pay play uh pay another player try saying that 10 times fast in multiplayer for the use of the northern sawmill so speaking of the northern sawmill let's head up there and let's take a look all right so here's the northern sawmill um, it's a classic, like I said on the map tour, uh, I love the looks of it, I love the feel of it, it's got this very old-fashioned, beautiful feel to it. Prior to purchasing it, it works like any of the other sawmills in the base game. You deliver wood, you sell it, same way as you do to the southern sawmill. The only difference is, you deliver the wood, by dropping it in the lake and for those that didn't watch the map tour or haven't seen it I'm just gonna quickly throw in a couple of pieces of wood I don't want birch I want spruce let's go with a couple of pieces of spruce and there we go so it's in the lake nothing's happening oh there we go move a little bit quicker once we're out of the water you just move up and you go to the cell point or the cell trigger, cell wood. We didn't sell quite as much as we did. I forget how many I spawned the last time. And anyway, the wood comes out of the lake and it goes up inside the sawmill and is sold just like any other sawmill. Beautiful animation. Anyway, let's go ahead and we're going to purchase the sawmill and we'll look at its production times and what it produces. You're familiar with productions from the base game? Find the purchase or the buy point. R, and this is expensive. This is why, hmm, I said be warned. It is $250,000 to buy this sawmill. That's why I had to cheat in some money too. So, let's look at our production list. Or oh, production chains. So we now own our first production chain, or theoretically we do. Kind of like the base game, you can deliver wood here, and it will, even though you sell it, when you go ahead and you purchase a production chain, as long as you have purchased it within a reasonable amount of time, for a delivery, it will retain some of the wood you sold. Over time, if you don't, if you haven't purchased it, over time that will reduce. Then you can go ahead and sell more wood. It will eventually fill up. So that is, if you have large amounts of wood that you don't want to turn into product, that is the advantage of the Southern Sawmill. It doesn't matter how much you fill it; it's not going to fill. So you can have a full train load and sell it down there. And then you can bring in another tractor trailer full of logs and you can sell them. This one, like most production points, does have a maximum capacity. As you can see, just like the other sawmill, it will produce wood planks. And those are from the base game. Wood planks long, which are new. 
wood beams, which are new, and prefab walls. Now, all these are required for other production chains, and we're going to look at those when we look at other production chains. As you can see, the recipes are fairly different, and thus the speed at which it produces those products is going to vary. You pretty much need 416 input wood for any of the productions. It's just the amount you get out will vary. I'm not going to go into how quickly it will produce a pallet of whichever you are looking for. Um, you can kind of do the math if you've already watched my video um, on how to calculate how quickly a production chain will do productions. You'll know that you multiply the cycle or the recipe by the number of cycles per month. Remember to, and unfortunately I can't verify for sure or not because this being a DLC, it's locked away, so I can't look at the XML file. But I'm assuming this is a shared production facility. If you activate, and I'm going to dig into this more, I will let you guys know definitely later on. But assuming, let's say, you only have two productions active. Let's say you want planks and wood beams, and you deactivate the other two. The total production amount that this can put out in a month then gets divided by two products instead of by four products. So you are able to produce more pallets of those two products than if you had all four productions running. If you have questions about how that works, leave me a comment and I will do another video on how production chains work in terms of shared productions and how it affects their recipes. All right, so let's take a look at the output now. So in terms of your produced wood, the only place that I can find and I might be missing something for output productions is here at the back of the sawmill. It's where you're going to find your uh, your finished product. Now the sawmill does have a decent storage capacity so you don't have to worry about it. Once you own the sawmill you actually own the land around it too. So this pesky little, well it's not a pesky, it's kind of a cute tree. But this tree here, because it's our own land, we can sh chop it down. There it goes. And look at that. It went into the lake and it became part of our production. There's not a lot of trees here though, so don't think of this as a free source of wood. Um, one thing that does change when you own this, remember we dumped, what was it, eight cut pieces of spruce in here, so we'll dump a couple again. And you will notice now that we own it, the animation has changed. And it actually will take log by log out of the lake instead of doing them all at once. And so I thought that was kind of neat. If you haven't seen that, that's definitely worth... Um, <laughs> just just for the change in the animation is, is worth the $250,000 for the sawmill. As you can see, the amount of wood that's in storage is going up. And we are slowly producing product. So I'm going to run ahead a couple of hours and see when we get our first product delivered. And I will bring you back in. 
at that point. All right, so here we are just under two hours later and we have our first pallet of planks. We're getting closer on having a pallet of long planks, wood beams, not so much. Prefab walls look like they take a long time and wood chips, well, they're kind of useless so we don't really care how quickly they get produced. I was wrong, by the way. I thought this was the trigger where product would spawn. It actually spawns across the railroad tracks in the shelter over here. And it looks like there is a spawn trigger for each one, different product type, which is nice because the base game sawmill has a very limited storage trigger. That's, uh, I guess, the polite way of uh, phrasing it. And it fills up quickly. This looks like you can let it run for a while and it will take a good amount of storage. Again, if you've got a forklift or a front end loader with a pallet fork, you can just run it up to where the train is, follow the train track south, down to the unload facility in town, and then you can distribute it to your production facilities in town. So that is the difference between the saw two sawmills. If you're wondering why the first sawmill, the one in the south, isn't producing anything, that is why. It's not an actual production, it's more of a sell slash buy point as opposed to a production point like this sawmill. Hopefully, this helped you figure out the difference between the two sawmills. If you have any questions, like I said, or any comments, leave me a comment in the comment section. Please, and you will have my eternal gratitude, give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe because we will be taking a look at the other production points, roller coasters, yarders, all sorts of different things in upcoming videos. Take care. Thanks, Jay.